What up again, guys? This is Dos Giddy Sing Gia back at it again, and we're going to be talking about the second part of, you probably guessed it if you're tuned in and listening to the other episode, say. Tons of uses, tons of applications, infinite versatility. You need to know your says. Get them down pat, people. And it's my pride, and Mike's as well, to bring it to you. So allow us to elaborate a little bit on say. All right. What do you say, Mike? I think I think we could uh, give it a crack. I mean, we're the two Gary scene Gia, but maybe we could be your Gia, you know? Let's make it happen, man. Nice. Okay, so point number three, or the third use of say, which if you want more info on, I encourage you to listen to the short episode produced by Mike last week. Uh, this delves a little bit deeper into one of the uses of the passive voice, right? The se, se tierra or cerrarse. So we're going to talk about the passive voice, and it's a bit different in Spanish, all right? Okay, so for everybody who's already beyond fourth grade, fifth grade English, you're going to be familiar with passive and active voice, but we might need a refresher nevertheless. So an active voice sentence is they read the books. They being the subject, reading being the, or read being the verb, and the books are the object. Okay, so you can change this, make it into a passive sentence, and we do it all the time in speaking uh, in English. So we would say, the books are read. All right, and it sounds totally normal. Um, you could even say the books are read by the students or by them, whatever. In Spanish, not so common. But in the event that you do want to say that, the, the way to do it isn't intuitive because we rely on the verb to be and then we use the past participle of the present perfect. Oh, we're getting into grammar, damn it. <laughs> All right, so to give you an example again, um, the past participle of the present perfect of to give is given. So in English, for, past, uh, for the passive voice, we'd say the book is given. Which makes us want to say in Spanish, el libro es dado. That's like what occurs to us is the most obvious. No. Maybe here we need to make an insert that if you're going to clarify um, who did the action, and like that's the most important part, then you would say, say it our way. You know, like, es escrito or fue escrito por. And then all the other cases of a passive voice, you're going to use the say conjugation. So like, uh, the books are read, los libros se leen, or the apartments were sold. So you want to say, what you will tend to want to say is, los pisos fueron vendidos, mm -hmm. but don't do it. You have to use the say. So think about it for a second. How would you? All right, the answer, los pisos Se vendieron, mm -hmm. right? And so we conjugate, we took the verb to sell, we put it in the past, and we said the apartments sold, and by using say, we actually converted this whole thing into the passive voice. Mm -hmm. And it's the equivalent of were sold. Yeah. Again, the two, that, the two that I'm giving you, you have to practice a lot until it becomes a force of habit. Mm hmm. And this just say is just basically showing that you can say the action and the receiver of the action, but without a performer of the action, which sometimes can sound a little bit incomplete. Um, so I definitely try to use a little bit more of the active voice, but sometimes you totally do need to use the passive voice. If they're up. So you could say, if I'm baking a cake and the cake burned, you could, you know, like I didn't, take a blowtorch and like burn it with a blowtorch on the top. It just got burned in the oven for by lasting too long. You could say, se quemó el bizcocho, you know? Um, so yeah. it's just like, it, it's just a, a, a way that you can kind of take blame out of the situation, which I think leads us to another interesting use that, uh, of the, of the say that is, that is very particular to Spanish, which is probably my favorite grammar structure in all of Spanish. I don't know if you want to take this one because it's kind of it's kind of the passive one. 
Uh, yeah, actually, I think I'm going to relinquish the honors to you. Oh my god, you know what? I, I appreciate that, Andres, because I absolutely love this one. So in English, if I lost my keys, I would say, you know, I lost my keys because I'm an idiot and I dropped them somewhere. But in Spanish, there's a way to say this without showing me as having the blame. In fact, there's a way to, to, to frame this. Victimize you. Me being the victim. I'm a complete victim here. I am not at fault. It is... The keys are actually kind of terrorizing me. But anyway, without further ado, I'll get into it. So you could say in Spanish, Se me per perdieron las llaves. So you could say, and in this, this structure sounds like in English, the keys were lost to me. Or the keys lost themselves to me. And another example of this is instead of I forgot, in English, me being the person who performs the action of forgiving, you could say, se me olvido in Spanish. It was forgotten to me, or it forgot itself to me. So in this case, I clearly am just the innocent bystander on the side. I didn't do the action, so I couldn't possibly have any of the blame. In fact, the the thing that receives the action did the action to itself with me, with the may thrown in there as an afterthought, me being the victim, just to show that it was done kind of at me. Um, but yeah. that is absolutely my, fa absolutely my favorite grammar structure in Spanish. I think it is very funny and uh, kind of yeah, telling. Dude, I, just, I just love removing the responsibility of being the one who... Who normally, and at least in our language, and the way we think about those those actions, imply responsibility. You know, like you have to own up to it. Well, yeah. no, you don't. We have no, a way you don't. around that. The way that I see this is, anytime you know that you can use the verb with the say usage, um, and you want to involve like someone else as being acted upon or, or incorporate, no, involve someone in the result, then you can add like me, te, le in the sentence and you'll still conjugate with se in the front. And after this, you'll have the next indirect object pronoun like me, te, le, nos, os, um, and then conjugate the verb. But I was always crazy confused about this, man. Like, and, and I just feel like I need to tell people a couple of examples and explain why it goes like that. Well, let me look at the so, example that I've got here for like, say, abre. If you're like, if you're like, say, abre la puerta. But if you're the one walking up to it, you could probably say, say, me abre la puerta, right? And it just, yeah. it opens itself and it's just showing that it's opening for or to you. Yeah, yeah, totally, dude. Like, um... We talked about this. I'll use this example because we've already discussed it one other time, which is acabarse, which is like to run out when something is uh, ending or finishing acabarse. So you can say, um, I'm running out of tickets. And you'll say, well, better yet, the tickets are running out. Se acaban, acaban los billetes. But if I want to say, I'm running out, I always would like go through all of my alternatives in my head thinking about like, how do I say that I'm running out thinking that I'm somehow the one supposed to be acting, but no, the tickets themselves are running out and I have to include myself as being included in the end result. So really you would say, se me acaban los billetes. And that means they're running out to me technically, but that's the most sound translation you can come up with for I am running out. And they do this tons, so keep your eye out for it. If you guys have questions, drop them in like the comments or whatever, and I'll try to pick them apart and, and just explain, because that caused me tons of frustration, really. I'd like to deliver the public just one more example that I think really nicely unifies a couple things that we touched on. All right. So, um, irse is like to go, but mostly to go away. It, it implies that it's going from like where we're referring to another place. And um, you could say, like in general, se va, and that's like it's going away. And then you would say, se va, de, se me va de las manos. 
right? And so what we did was we didn't say mis manos, like we talked about in the first mm-hmm. example, and we also just talked about how to use the verb with say and include yourself in the, the ending or the result to somehow be involved. So it's, this means I'm losing control or, or like it's out of my control because you're saying it goes basically like from my hands. I can't get to it. So se me va de las manos. Or so just to clarify one last thing. If we're talking about something plural, like uh, the problems are out of my control, then you could say, pues los problemas se me van de los manos. I just say that to, to further clarify that the subject isn't you, mm-hmm. even though in English that's how we want to think about it. Yeah, and again, I think it goes back to not necessarily thinking about that in, in English at first because it's just a little bit, I think that's an extra step to think about it in English and then translate it versus if you just think about it more conceptually or you start thinking about it in Spanish, I think it's just easier to then be able to produce those Spanish words and the, all those grammar structures. So the last uh, one that I have written down to say at least is the, it's called like the fake say, some people call it. It is when you have a, an indirect object and a direct object uh, with a verb, and they are both starting with L. So if you say, um, so if I say, if I'm telling Andres, Sean said it to Andres, I would have to say, so I would think, Sean, lo, or like lay, being to Andres, lo dijo. That sounds really weird. Sean Lelo dijo. That doesn't sound correct. So what we have to do here is we have to take that first lay and we have to change that to a say. And that, my understanding of that is basically so it just sounds better and you could just continue saying, it just kind of flows much better with the language. Other than that, it, there's no real reason to change from the lay to say. I think it yeah, just it, shows. Well, dude, it doesn't seem like it has any kind of, I might be getting my linguistic terms, terms mixed, but like any kind of um, syntactic change yeah. to the, you know, it it, it, the verb stays exactly. It's because it has nothing to do with the verb. Exactly. All you're doing is swapping out one indirect object, no, two indirect object pronouns. Those are the only things you have to remember. Lay and lace. Yeah, lay and lace. Every of those pop up in the presence of a direct object pronoun, then you gotta switch it. And for me, the way that I always thought about it was not trying to remember, oh, it's lay and lace. It just, to me, made way more sense to be like, well, it's whenever there's a la la sound. That just sounds really yeah. awkward. Sean Le Lo Dijo. That just sounds like la li lo li la. It sounds like I'm like a kid singing a song or something like that. So if you see say lo, say los, say la, or say las in a sentence, you should understand that that first say is just changing lay or lace to make it a little bit more intelligible, to make the conversation flow just a little bit better. So that was my last example. But very, very, very briefly, I wanted to touch on the real last example, that one that I didn't know for the longest time, everybody knows the first and foremost, what is say? Say means I know. Say with the accent mark. Means but I you know. Didn't. That's one of the uh, that's one of the original verbs that you learn when you're learning Spanish. But what I did not know uh, was that say also is to be. It is also the command form of to be. So my friend, this is going to be shout out to Lorenzo, lives back in Segovia still, I think. He had a tattoo on his arm, on his right arm, that said, Say Fuerte. How stupid. Why would he say that? No, he's a cool dude. I like Lorenzo. Because be strong. But I didn't know what that meant at first. I was like, yeah, that was what I thought. I was like... I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. strong. What I've, does that I've mean? I've already heard this story, so I was just pretending like oh, yeah. foreshadowing your thoughts. Yeah, no, right? I was just, yeah. Wasn't exactly. your initial gut instinct like, dude, that's the dumbest thing? Yeah, no, seen. no, exactly. There's another case of se habla espanol in el banco. Yeah, right? I was just like, what the hell is this dude talking about? This guy clearly doesn't know how to speak Spanish. 
I know, and it turns out I'm the one who should have been embarrassed because I didn't know, apparently, that say also is All right, that's it from Dos Giddies today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, it's been all about say, and we didn't touch on all of it, which means that there's still more to be said. Uh, I tried that, but it didn't work, did it? No, that's Never gold, we're leaving that in. That's no, gold. Keep it, keep it. <laughs> we'll be checking you guys next week for another episode. Maybe a short episode, maybe a debate. Who knows where it'll go? Who knows? So many options. <laughs> All right, pasta y huevos, y'all. Pasta y huevos. <laughs>